All right. Welcome back, everybody, to Imperion Galactic Survival. I'm Know It All DM. How y'all doing today? I'm doing really, really, really good today. Today, I am on the creative server, as you can tell from the fact that I'm not dying in space with my helmet off. Um, I'm on a, well, on a creative game, uh, and I am going to showcase my capital vessels. I'm going to go through, as I did with the bases and small vessels, and show you all of the capital vessels that I have uh, built. And as you can see, there's quite a few of them. Um, uh, I'm going to stop right here because those are all the prefabs. So let's just kick this off with the Alien Dreadnought. The Alien Dreadnought is unfinished. Uh, it's a large capital vessel, which was, uh, it's an alien ship that it has no gravity or devices of any kind apart from the weapons that are on it. Um, it's similar in design to the alien gunship that I showed uh, in a special uh, episode. However, the alien dreadnought is equipped with a large landing platform here, which is meant to land the uh, uh, the small space, the small vessels, the alien small vessels that you saw, and it can hold quite a few of them, quite a large number of them. Um, but the alien dreadnought's main entry, apart from through this, uh, through this hangar bay here, is just like with the alien gunship, all the way in the back where the engines are. So I'm gonna head back there real quick and show you the entryways this way. Now you can go through either side, but they don't connect to each other right away. But they have this little entrance and there are multiple levels on this ship. I'm gonna show you this level first, which I'm gonna call the engine level. So the engine level has various different corridors and such that you can go through. Here's the other engine, um, but the, it's primarily got several, like it's got like four main chambers. This one here, this one over here, one in front of this and one in front of the one over there I showed you. And then it's got smaller chambers such as this one and let's see, this one here. It's also a smaller one, but it goes all the way to the forward area here. Actually, it's got a lot more than four, I forgot. Um, but it comes all the way to the forward here where the, well, I've got a single, uh, uh, what, whatchamacallit thing, cockpit there so the ship can fly. But this is the uh, engine level and I'm just gonna go back this way. And as you can see, once we get back over here, there is actually a way to go up and a way to go down. So I'm gonna start by going up here. This goes straight to the hangar. You just saw this right over here. That's why I wanted to go up first, just to show you that real quick. And then back over on this side, which is the engine entry that we came through originally, you can go down here this is more of uh, what would be the crew quarters of the ship. Uh, you've got the core right here, which it is an a it's an alien core, even though for some reason it says player faction. Don't ask me why it says player faction when it's an alien core. As you can see, it's well, it's actually listed as private. That's weird because it's active, but it's got no fuel tank. That's Weird. What happens if I replace it with an actual alien core now? Now it says alien faction. And of course that now says alien, but I can change it to put what it let's see. Alien, now it's private, and it says player faction. Okay, so it was an alien core, it was just the player faction rather than alien faction. That's kind of weird. But anyway. Uh, these are the quarters, the crew quarters areas. Then over here is what I would imagine would end up being like a mess hall and possibly the medic station or something like that. 
and then back over on this side you've got some more crew quarters um but these ships the alien uh capital vessels that i made i purposefully made it with a very organic feel and it uses uh, the alien blocks, which unfortunately only have 150 hit points, um, so they're really easy to uh, damage, but, uh, you, you know, because a, a standard steel block has 500 hit points, concrete's got 600, but in any case, that is the alien dreadnought. It's equipped with uh, six laser cannons. But that's it. It's got two, four, and six. Or is it five? It might be five. Two. Yeah, two on one side, one in the middle, and then two on the other side. So this one only has five. Uh, the alien gunship has six, which is this one right here. Um, it's got a single engine entry here, and it's only got one level inside. Uh, this is the one that I ended up calling Tin Man in the... Uh, showcase for it which uh, I like I enjoyed doing that with uh, using Harry the uh, text-to-speech uh, narrator um, but this little gunship is it's not terribly little but compared to that it is quite small um, whereas this was made for uh, large-scale combat with its uh, rocket launchers up front as well as the uh, carrier capacity this was simply made as a gunship um, so that's those the next thing uh, are the atmospheric defenses which I showed you um, I showed you those with the bases because they went along with a base this is the captured alien gunship which has a player core and is outfitted with a gravity generator as well as several uh, uh, devices and the like. Um, it's got a very organic -y feel like the, you, well, you can see it right here. Um, but I've outfitted it so that a crew of three can live and survive in this gunship. Although, as you saw, it's not a very sturdy ship. What I really want them to do is to allow you to take the steel uh, blocks or combat steel or whatever and make them look like the alien blocks because it's a really cool texture that I can do a lot of good work with. Um, the next thing we've got is, as I was showing before, we've got the power cores for the, uh, the, the, whatchamacallit thing, the role play thing that I was going to do myself. But I was talking with Captain Adonis, and we might incorporate that into a uh, role play uh, adventure that we're planning to do as a group. So that would be really cool if we can do that. Um, I hope you guys will look forward to that. Um, but continuing on, the next thing I've got is a, one of my earlier designs. It's the uh, mobile base. It's got, it's simply got steel blocks. Um, it's got the transparent slopes here, and uh, it's got, I think it's got its own gener uh, gravity generator inside. I'm not positive. Let me turn this one off so its gravity isn't interfering. Okay, that should have turned it off. Um, so let me head up into this. This mobile base was meant for you to... Uh, land on the planet and yeah it's got a grab generator well of course I'm using gravity duh but it was meant for you to la land on a planet and uh, just take it from place to place as your only base um, it's got everything you need it's got you know fuel and giant generators and all but it's also got the food station over here it's got the medical and oxygen station right here the uh, advanced constructor here, and then just up front you've got your cockpit with the two side things. Um, it's got uh, several auto turrets in here, four auto turrets, to prevent intruders from coming in. Um, but that's the basics of this. Let's turn it off, and then 
spawn in the next thing, which everybody will remember. Well, everybody who saw my season one will remember from my season one game. This is the last hope. The last hope is my, uh, it's the capital vessel that I made in my season one. And it's got, this is the under deck with the auxiliary bridge. Uh, this is the final version of it, by the way. Uh, this is the auxiliary bridge, which uh, you might think of it as a combat bridge. Um, but down here, I've got all different types of uh, uh, generators and fuel tanks and the like. Um, I've also got a couple of hidden compartments with extra cargo boxes. Not that I ever actually used any of these cargo boxes for anything. The only cargo boxes I used were the ones in here. This is the uh, shuttle bay, which uh, has these doors here. Um, but And then I used these cargo boxes in this cargo bay. Um, across the cargo bay, you've got the med station here. Uh, the medical bay, uh, which this is, this is where the auxiliary bridge was, and so you can just come up here with the elevator. Uh, I have that on display in the middle. Um, over here, you've got the quarters, which this is a one-man ship, so there's only one quarters. You've got the kitchen here, and then you've got primary engineering back here with the two massive generators. You've got a advanced constructor over here, uh, gravity generator there. Um, let's see. Up here, you've got uh, the core is up here. You've got the uh, weapons control and weapons firing station. Uh, you could use multiple different people in here. It's just that that's what it was made for. But the main deck is this deck here, which has all the main stuff in it that I was showing you. But the bridge is over this way, out here, and I'm going to give you a good look at the ship from the outside like this. Um, it's sort of a uh, Millennium Falcon-ish, but it's purposefully not exactly the same just because you know I didn't want to make it exactly the same um, but you've got the main bridge over here with you know several chairs and then you've got this which leads back down out here to the uh, under deck but it's also got a emergency exit right here with an elevator so you don't just fall whenever you walk across it um, so that's the last hope, which was from season one, as I said. Uh, the next thing is the Megapod, which is meant to go with the mini pod that I showed you. Uh, the mini pod being the small vessel. Let me just uh, spawn in a mini pod, like so. The mini pod is meant to dock inside here, if I can get that to, uh, and let's level them out, and you just dock the mini pod right inside here, and you've got a capital vessel with, uh, that you can use your mini pod to go places with. Uh, it's basically a warp drive added onto the mini pod, but it's also got, um, extra cargo boxes here. It's modeled after the mini pod with a warp drive on it. That's basically it. Um, so after that, after the Megapod, let's see, we've got this one I'm going to save for last because it's going to take the longest time. So I'll have to come back to the Mega Station. It's not even finished yet. and It's not even finished yet. Um, anyway, next is the Mobile Farm which I spawned in in the Mahula family server. It's basically, name says it all, it's a mobile farm. 
Um, Mobile Farm B is basically the same, except for it's got a uh, grab gen slapped on top and a hyperdrive down on the bottom. But I'm not going to bother war uh, spawning that in because it'll just use up extra things. But that's basically what it is. Uh, then you've got the Mobile Graph platform, which is a gravity generator. You know, it's a mobile gravity generator. That's it. Um, I use it largely in creative mode to create gravity in areas so I can build, even if I don't want gravity on the uh, thing. Then we've got the MS line. Now, everybody may recognize the original MS Titan. This is a design by Arturis, um, and it's the base design for all of the ships, uh, all of the crashed MS Titans, um, hence the name MS Titan. Um, but this one has actually been uh, augmented to have a uh, the turrets are set are the same number of turrets that it uses the limited number of turrets that you can use, so you can spawn it in in a uh, in a standard game. Then I've got the MS Titan, which I modified slightly. Um, this one has uh, extra weapons of, like, it has as many weapons of every type as you can put on it. That's the only difference, is that it's got as many weapons of every type that you can put on it. Um, which, uh, I'm going to go ahead and destroy these because they are so big. So there goes the two MS Titans. Um, but then there is the MS Titan II, which is made completely out of combat steel. It's got the maximum number of weapons. Um, actually, let me do this real quick. I'm going to give you a quick tour of the MS Titans that I have. That's the original. That is the modified version for my purposes. Let me turn these off and I'll turn them off and then turn the next ones on as I go. Um, this episode's gonna be quite long because uh, my capital vessels are extremely large. I might even split the uh, well, they're not extremely large, but they're, they're uh, complex, let's say. Um, especially the modified versions of the Titan, which uh, Arturis did a great job at. But I, uh, so this is the original MS Titan. You've got the engine room here with the fuel tanks. You've got up here, you've got uh, a bunch of uh, RCSs. You've got some... Uh, of the, the capacitors and oxygen tanks and the like. Um, and this was, as I said, the original version. Um, and again, over here, you've got a uh, grav generator. Now, I believe I took out one grav generator or something and just left one in the back and one in the front rather than two in the back and two in the front. But, uh, and then down here, you've got more power generations and capacitors and the like. And the other side is much the same as you will see down here. You may have looted this place quite often in your uh, in your travels through Imperion on Akua. But down here you've got the uh, bridge access which this will bring you up to the bridge. And as you can see, this is one of the original versions because it has the Science Lab Deco here, but it's also been altered with a med station and oxygen station up here, which I don't mind because normally it would just have two more of the Deco things. It's fine, but it's got some uh, few extra fuel tanks up here and it's got uh, the windows and everything are, these are just the standard hull blocks or hull cubes and uh, that Arturis made. Um, this has, let's see, now this is my modified version. I modified this and put the escape pod hatches here. Why does it say, oh, maybe this wasn't the original, maybe this one is this one. I don't know which one this is. Um, 
but I put an escape pod hatch here and there's another escape pod hatch up front. Let me check out, let's see. The one facing away is the other one. This one right here, I believe, will be the one, let me turn this off, over here. I believe this is the one, well, this is the one with all the turrets on it. That's weird. Maybe this is, maybe I saved that one and modified this one. I, I don't know. Um, maybe these are the ones with, yeah, these have all steel blocks. What did these have over here? Because I know that I modified, yeah, these are the interior blocks. So this is the original, but I modified it slightly. Um, I think I modified this one uh, for our uh, game. I added this here. Uh, which the core is right there, um, but I turned this area into a escape pod area. Um, and then you've got the hangar bay here, which uh, they added, you know, extra stuff in here and I just kept it. Um, yeah, this is the original that I'm slightly modified because it's got those annoying blocks. And then, yeah, and then this has nothing up here. Um, I don't know why I put the escape pods on this one. And then up here you've got the garden. And down here you've got the other grab generator and the other escape pods. I think I just put these in here um, because I was testing out where to put them or whatnot. And you've got the auxiliary bridge over here. And up top, you've got the garden again. And the forward section, you've got the, uh, the warp core room, which in the original version, it just had a warp core slapped here. I made it look a little, you know, more interesting. Uh, warp, warp drive fuel tank here with pipes and the like. Um, and then I think this was the original. I think I made this and then I added the crew quarters into it. Um, which I will show you that over here. This MS Titan with all the weapons and such on it uh, is made purely of steel rather than the original blocks. And it's basically the same. It, in fact, it should be exactly the same otherwise. Um, except this one doesn't have the escape pods. What does this have? Oh, this just has that leading up to here, which is interesting. I think this I modified just by putting the guns on it. Or maybe someone else did. I don't remember. But these are no longer things. And yeah, and this just has no... Yeah, this is what it looked like. It had the uh, core, the warp core with the oxygen tanks, and that's it. And it had the uh, fuel tank up on the bridge in place of one of the uh, the other things. But I wanted this to be a more... I wanted... I made... Let's see. I think this one someone else did, and I used this as a base to upgrade to that one, the MS Titan II, and that was my modification of the original that I got from Arturus. Let's see, power off. Um, yeah, that one I think I downloaded uh, off the subscription of Arturus and then modified, and that one is the one that someone else modified, which is similar, but a little bit different. Um, this one over here is a modified version of that one, which this one has a lot more of stuff on it. It's pure combat steel rather than uh, rather than steel or uh, the other stuff. I upgraded all of the uh, the storage to the largest fuel tanks. Um, I put a lot more internal defenses in it and added some uh, huge generators rather than a bunch of the tier one large ones. Um, in here, uh, I kept these, but those are all tier two 
uh, things that are up there rather than the tier one ones. And I, uh, as you can see, I added more, let's see, where is it? Well, these are the, those, the, the, those things. But over here, instead of just having a blank area, I put a constructor over here. This is an advanced constructor. Um, and then down here, yeah, this is where I put the uh, offline protection. For in case anybody just wanted to spawn this into a multiplayer game, they could do it and not have to worry because it's already got the offline protection. Um, and coming into this area down here, um, as you can see, I modified everything. I labeled everything in this version of it. Um, let's see. Up to the main bridge, we've got the main bridge. Uh, this one has the warp drive tank over here rather than in the engineering room. But otherwise, the engineering room is basically the same. But this has the cargo boxes and the O2 the o stations and health stations, just like the others did. Um, but I also added the, uh, this has the habitation and then the escape pods here. So this ha is a combination of the other two with the elevator here and the escape pods, rather than just the elevator or escape pods. So you've got those up here on the habitation area. I added a whole bunch of habitation-y stuff. Uh, you've got a mess hall court, food court thing here. You've got uh, regular crew quarters. You've got the, uh, the officer's quarters. Um, and so I added all of these into it as opposed to the original that had nothing there. Um, and, uh, here is the, uh, the, this thing, garden area, and as I showed you, this was the, uh, engine room, but it's got the pipes and stuff, and it's got some more defenses, um, and then down here, there's a lot more to do. You've got more constructors here, you've got the forward, uh, grab generator, you've got some, uh, O2 and medical or yeah O2 and medical station and then the auxiliary bridge here which I don't know why that's red I really don't know why that's red um, but in any case then you've got the escape pods here and the forward shuttle bays here and I enclosed the shuttle bays and put a repair station in here um, so that's the main difference between the Titan 2 and the regular Titan is from the outside anyway you see the shuttle bays um, but it's got all the weaponry of that Titan which is the one made of steel and you've got all of the uh, you've got the hangar bays and stuff of that one in the multiplayer that Captain Adonis and I are going to do uh, Google is probably going to join us too and a few others might join us as extras but uh, in the role play game that we're going to end up, uh, it's basically going to be a film made using uh, Imperion. But we're going to start in that MS Titan and we're going to show it off as the pre-crash MS Titan. We're going to record up to the crash. It's going to be really cool. No idea when we're going to get time to do this, but hopefully it'll be soon. Um, but those are the... Uh, MS Titans uh, that I have on here and then I'm going to show you my modifications to them for the other vessels of the Titan fleet the MS fleet uh, let's see destroy 25 destroy 24 destroy 23 uh, it'd be 26 then destroy 26 all right, so there goes the MS Titans. The next thing I want that uh, I'll show you is the uh, Europa, which is a smaller version of the Titan. It's a similar design, but with only the uh, cargo bay, shuttle bay, and forward. Um, it doesn't have the huge engine area. It's a smaller design with, you know, a slightly different, slight difference here with the... Uh, 
forward area raised and it's only got one eye one bridge which is up front this was used this back part has the standard hull blocks because it was made from the original ms titan but the forward part is just steel which all the blocks and well actually i might i upgraded all of these to steel didn't i oh well anyway um but the whole blocks now have 500 health as well as the steel blocks so i figured i'd just make it all steel best i can but this back here is the engineering room which i used regular rcs's because that's what they had in the others large constructor because large constructor would be all you had technology technologically wise at the time and large generators um and so uh, that's the those and it you saw the engines out back that were slightly different um, but we've got the staircase here which it's hard to get up because that tends to stop you um, unless you're running which you know but anyway so up here you've got the uh, area here above the uh, what used to be the exits which i have changed to these i don't know why they're lighter i need to recolorize them because they were colored differently when i made it to match the rest of it but something changed apparently um but anyway and then the uh exit is here instead of the two on the sides so it's only got one entrance to the cargo area up here uh, as you can see, this leads to the other side here. There's some more cargo. But instead of having this as the forward engineering area, you've got the grav generator and all the fuel tanks up here. And then back here, you've got the area that leads to what would be the crew quarters. I didn't put them in here because we're not going to be actually filming inside of one of these. They're just going to be extras showing, you know, stuff um, up here you've got the top exit that leads to the top up here where you could theoretically land some ships or whatever but i just put it here because you know why not um and then you've got the forward area here which is the garden and uh which is above the what was the forward engineering and you've got the similar uh engineering room here which i didn't modify those with the tubes like i did in the other one because this is what i had originally done before they introduced the small tubes as block types um but since we're not actually going to be coming in here that's not going to matter and then of course you've got the the uh bridge which is the same as the forward bridge it's also red there that's why because i painted the floor red in the engineering room and this was not i'm gonna have to change that in the titan and maybe in this one but anyway um so that's these i uh, that's the europa which uh i actually named the uh all the ships after moons because titan is a moon of uh saturn it's the largest moon of saturn so um i did that and then you've got the europa 2 here which is the same design just with combat steel and upgraded uh upgraded weaponry and uh you know it's basically the equivalent of the ms titan 2 it's just the europa 2 um i updated it it's got you know the hanger like this it's got um i haven't changed those yet that's one thing i will have to change um but you know and pretty much that's the only difference i don't think i even changed anything else in the rest of it it's just i modified the hangar bay and made it all combat steel but uh anyway let me well, come back down here and leave so i can get on with my tour of my ships uh that's destroy 27 destroy 28 now the last of the ms line is the ms castillo the ms castillo is a carrier ship which is uh also modeled from the ms titan however it's got an extended uh uh shuttle bay 
compared to the Titan. Um, it's got the same entryway here, but it only has two uh, engine pods here. As you can see, it's got this one over here with the uh, the grav generator there, and then this one over here, which has a large constructor in it. Um, instead of having the large bridge tower, there is a uh, the extended uh, cargo or shuttle bay comes back here. And like I said, you see the difference in those? Yeah, that di those all used to look uniform and have the same color scheme and everything. I don't know what happened, but I'm going to have to fix that before our before we actually record. Um, but anyway, so you've got the extended uh, shuttle bay here and up here uh, you've got a tertiary shuttle bay with uh, upper exits and uh, this is where the crew quarters and everything would be over here. And then the forward of this is pretty much identical to the MS Titan. In fact, it is identical to the MS Titan because I copied the MS Titan at the time and just modified it uh, to match the rest. So you've got the forward generators and the escape pods here. But uh, that's the MS Castillo, which, uh, I mean, I, I had a lot of fun modifying the Titan to make two additional ships of that class. Not destroy, destroy, 29. Um, but yeah, it was really fun making those. So let's move on to the MX-100 Space Miner. This is one of my latest capital vessels that I've made, and it is basically just a simple space miner. You just turn it on, head over to a uh, Sathium asteroid somewhere, Let's, let's use this one here as a uh, test object and you go up and you just mine with it. Um, it's not capable of warp drive, obviously, but it's a really good collector of, wait, that's the Polaris Cruiser. There's the Sathium mine, or Sathium asteroid. Um, the Polaris Cruiser is the uh, starting ship that you start with in uh, creative mode in uh, Omicron orbit. So while sitting, you just hit the uh, control panel and you start mining. I don't think I'm close enough. Let's get a little bit closer, shall we? And you can use the alt mode to see how close you've gotten. And then just activate the drill turret and start mining. Like that, and I'm gat gaining sapium. And you can mine any other type of uh, resource while you're here. Um, but I just uh, put that there and uh, you just have to keep in mind that when you do that, when you look up, you're actually looking down and you know vice versa when you're in the turret mode. So that's the uh, space miner. It's my it's an, a simple uh, modification that's Polaris Cruiser. I want to come back this way uh, back to this fleet here. Um, but I mean, it's a, a cute little mining vessel that I, uh, it's rather cheap to build. Um, if you look in here, it's, you know, it uses a little Zascosium and Aristrum, but that's because of the laser itself. But, I, uh, which oddly enough, the laser itself, I think only uses four to make, but it uses 10 in the blueprint because uh, the blueprint thing always rounds it up to the nearest 10. So even the ones that only use two, one or two Zascosium and Aristrum, it uses 10 in the blueprint, which I don't like that, but let's see. Next we have the Onslaught, which was my first attempt at a, uh, a combat only vessel. Uh, I made this in season one. Uh, and it's basically just got turrets all over it. And that's it. So um, it didn't do nearly as well as I had hoped, even though it's made out of combat steel. 
because the uh, now it, it'll probably work better now because uh, when I was using it in season one, Combat Steel didn't have nearly the uh, durability of what it currently does. But uh, the idea was to just fly over a POI with this sucker and let it destroy it. Now it might have worked better if I put the uh, artillery turret on the bottom, but I, you know, like I said, I was pretty new at creating things at the time. So uh, in any case, let's turn you off so your gravity doesn't bother me. Um, not that I've been using, you know, ungravitying things anyway. Uh, now we have the Orbital Defense M, which, as I think I showed you this in the capital ship thing, um, but these were my original designs because you couldn't put mini guns on bases, so I made capital ship versions of them, um, which I really could def uh, could uh, delete now, but uh, in any case... Then you've got the orbital landing platform, which I also used in season one. Um, I used this mostly docking the shuttle on top and then spawning in my uh, my base and landing the base at it and everything. And so, you know, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, it, it was it's a nice little ship and. Uh, it's a landing platform made in the design of the uh, landing platforms in the abandoned mine. Uh, continuing on, we've got one of my favorites, the pirate frigate. Uh, let me turn you off because you do have a grab gen. Power off. Um, this is one of my favorite designs. I designed this myself. Um, it was actually designed as, uh, like the whole design, I designed as part of a larger vessel, which I will show you in a bit, but I always thought it looked sort of like a pirate ship style ship. Uh, so I turned it into one um, with the uh, deck of the ship up here with your cannon turrets. You gotta have cannons on a pirate ship, right? and uh, your thrusters making a fiery type thing. And, uh, the cockpit is up here. So you've got the uh, pirate ship-esque look with, of course, the uh, masthead grinning smiley face thing. Um, but the interior of it is also just as piratey, if I can remember how to get down. Uh, back over here. So you've got several ways you can enter. You can enter back through here, or you can enter through the forward area through this. So I'm gonna come in this way. This will take you to the galley, uh, which uh, it's your basic food eating area. I can actually replace these now with the actual things if I wanted. Um, this was before they added, uh, added in the furnishings. They didn't have these at the time, which I could replace this with now if I wanted, but I'm just gonna leave it there as it is for now. Um, but you've got your food processor and refrigerators there, and then down below, you've got your ammo boxes and your cargo bay, which uh, they had just added these, and they had they all had the same uh, amount as a regular cargo box before. Now they have a lot more, so they've got a lot more storage than I did when I built the thing. Um, you've got your shuttle bay here, which uh, you've got you know, two entrances there, and then back here you've got your massive crosswalky area, because every pirate ship has to have a you know unique, strange, confusing layout so um i made a unique strange confusing layout uh area um in here you've got your uh engine your multi-deck uh central core based engine uh which it's got everything you would need in here but it's all engine-y um that is a player core, even though it's red. I painted it red because red was pirate-esque. Pirate um, 
and then back out here you've got your uh, in your secondary entry up here let's see no that goes to the captain's quarters it's the tertiary entry up there that goes back into the bridge the secondary entry to the bridge is on this side here and then that tertiary entry up there is up here there um and so you've got your two entries to the captain's quarters which is at the very back of the ship um where the captain can look out and you know have people over for dinner and watch tv and with the little bed area here um and then down below you've got the crew bunks which are on the first floor uh first you've got all of the uh crew's uh lockers here uh the oxygen station that is inside of here as well um and you've got the crew bunks here with these things up here the nightstands up there for extra storage um so it's a very pirate-esque build um I, I just built it for fun but i like the design i don't think i would ever actually use it because it's made for a large crew who goes around pirating things but i like the design i like the way it looks it's really really cool um Let's go ahead and turn you off and summon the next capital vessel, the simple rocket. I showed this off before in the uh, in the base thing, um, but yeah, this is the simple rocket from season one that I built originally when Jake of All Trades was with us, and then uh, when Gublaish joined us, he joined us while we still had it. Um, it doesn't even have a grav gen on it because it's not meant for use in space. I mean, to go through space, yes, but not to park in space. The next thing I have is my space bus. And its name basically says it all. It's a bus in space. Um, it's got a couple of, uh, of ramps. It doesn't have any grav gen, but it's you know, a passenger bus. That's it. Uh, you've got the forward area and then the passenger bus area with the uh, bathrooms so that is the uh, space bus uh, next thing we have continuing on ah the derelict the derelict was my first attempt at a massive build and it took a long time to build um, I built the central part like the engine part first and then back to here and then back over that way and then forward a bit and over to these areas. But as you can see, this that is the pirate-esque uh, ship area. Now the main entry to this where you would come in if you were joining the crew or whatever is through the forward cargo bay here, um, which uh, my, th this thing is a frame killer, uh, so I'm going to have to delete it uh, afterwards, but there's uh, the uh, airlocks here on either side. You've got the uh, this, which is a, uh, it's an elevator, but it is a uh, turbo lift style elevator in that it goes not only up and down, but forward and backwards all throughout the ship. Um, as you can see, it goes all the way back and uh, up. So let's say you wanted to go to the bridge. The bridge is all the way up here in a Star Trek style bridge area um, with the, uh, the, well, I, I can't, still can't remember what you call the room where the crew meets and discusses things, but a uh, conference room, I guess. And then you've got the access to the captain's uh, ready room right here, which has its own elevator. Um, and then this leads out back, and you'll notice that the frames sometimes go really bad and then back to good, and that's just the way this ship does. But, I mean... It's got a medical facility, um, 
and then down, let's see that, that goes all the way to, ah, let's come out here, uh, let's see, uh, medical facility was there, you've got the uh, crew lounge here, which is the equivalent of 10 forward, which I can now replace those with different types of tables if I wanted, um, you've got the You've got like three engineerings in this. You've got secondary engineering here, which leads down here to a sort of fuel room. Um, up here, let's see. This is, yes, this is the shuttle bay, and then that went all the way forward, and then this is over here. And you can use this to come up to the medical bay or that crosswalking area. Uh, all the way to the top of this, you've got your secondary shuttle bay here and your cargo uh, room here. And above the cargo room, also attached to the turbo lift tube, is the garden. Um, now, you may be getting confused in this place and lost, and Captain Adonis would hate this place. But, uh, so here is the crosswalk area next to the engine room. I came in the other side, then went around the tubes and then came back over to here. Um, there's also little side elevator tubes here that lead back into the cargo bay. Um, but I, uh, and then we've got main engineering, which is through here, which has the warp core effectively, you know, the warp core where you fuel up everything. Um, it's got the decorative generators, which are solely for decoration. And then I've got uh, a whole bunch of massive generators underneath the uh, area. But this is a multi-deck engine room, which has just about no purpose. You've got the, uh, uh, whatchamacallit thing. Yeah, that thing, the weapons room. Um, and then you've got... Uh, extra exits to the back of engineering. Let's see. This is an engineering storage room. This is a superfluidity room. And this is the auxiliary bridge. And by superfluidity, I mean it has no purpose. Um, and uh, yeah, this is the, uh, like all these are just decorative places. Um, but uh, yeah, this is the engineering entirety um, anytime the yellow doors denote some sort of engineering like back here is the grav generator the only grav generator in the entire thing but it's the grav generator um, on either side you've got this little gathering area that leads to the habitation rooms the port habitation is here you've got first floor which has uh, six total uh, crew quarters which can hold four people each and it's got it's got its uh, uh, little relaxation area um, the second floor and the other side is almost identical just with a slightly different layout the second floor also has six uh, uh, crew quarters with four people in it each but I uh, you've got the uh, a little nicer lounge area here and both sides have access here to the escape pods and I don't know if you remember the uh, the small vessel escape pods that I met that I had like these but I uh, the way that these would work is you would have these backed up into here like so oh back up and it's hard to back them up because they have no forward thrusters and i did that on purpose i so that it's like, I believe that's good there. Okay. Um, so you would enter the escape pod 
up through here and into here. Now, uh, I actually made these when the passenger seats took up four squares, which is why they're off-centered. I haven't ever actually fixed that. But you would have a total of three escape pods on each side, um, being able to hold five people. So that's about 30 people. That's about a third of the crew that you could have in here. And uh, of course these have the ramps here so you can go out on either side. Um, so where were we? We were over here, up here. So up on the third level here, you've got the uh, officer's quarters. There are two quarters on either side. Uh, this side is the nicer, like this, the back part here is the nicer quarters with the window. Um, and you've got the bedroom here and the bathroom over here. You've got your little kitchen area over here. Really nice. And then this side over here has the same type of stuff, just a lot less uh, deco areas. So, um, and like I said, the other side of the ship is exactly the same, just different deco blocks, um, like different deco layouts. Um, on top of here, you've got a nice little garden. Over there, you've got a sports arena of some sort of basketball-esque, volleyball-esque, football-esque sport. Um, but up here, you've got your, uh, your, shut up, your, uh, your lounge area. And then, of course, you've got another exit up to the top. And you've got this crosswalk here, which can be accessed from either the lower or upper lounge, which leads back to the forwardish area of the ship here. Um, and that's the basics of this. Oh, I forgot. There's another engineering area that I didn't show you, um, which is on this level here. Was this the one? No, not this level, the level above it. Here. This level has an engineering air. No, wait. It was the one above this, apparently. Up here. Yes, here. Um, you've got a little engineering exit up here, which you uh, would equip yourself and then exit here. Now, I've got cargo boxes in there because they didn't have the proper deco blocks. Um, which uh, had inventory in them, but now they do. So I could change those if I wanted. But this thing is so big that uh, destroy 37 that uh, it normally lags out my game so bad that I have to uh, destroy it. I said be quiet. Do not disturb. Be quiet. Sorry about that. Um, I'll probably, you know, try to get rid of that. Uh, it, anyway, um, continuing on in the capital vessels. Let's see where were we? we were at the derelict. Uh, let's see. There's the Last Hope, which is my original version. You saw the Last Hope, and this is this was my first save of it before I modified it. This is the Manta which uh, I told you I would show you the Manta pod and the Manta. So this is the Manta and this is the Manta pod. Um, let's do this and flatten out. And now the uh, space bus was a modified version of the Manta. I modified the Manta um, so that it can be more space bus, space e. Uh, come on, can you please dock? There you go. And so here we have the Manta, which uh, its primary entrances are just like with the space bus there. We've got the forward area, which is a little bit bigger. Um, and you've got your food 
area over here, your engineering room back here um, with everything you need in it, and you've got your crew quarters over here, um, which, you know, it's an interesting small little uh, thing. There's the bathroom, of course. Um, but that's the manta here. Let me turn you off so your gravities do not bother me. Uh, next is, let's see, from the Mat Manta is the uh, Titan Survivor Transport. You guys saw this in season two, uh, where we used it to go to Masperon, um, and a couple of other things, I believe. But, uh, you know, it, it was for uh, Gublash, Captain Adonis, and my personal mini pods to land in, and we could use it to go from place to place. It's like a modified version of the uh, Megapod. Um, then we've got the turreted drop raid base, which is another thing that I used in, uh, in season one. I used this as a lot of my, for a lot of my raiding where I would go down to a planet, raid, and then come back up from the planet. Um, it was, you know, it, it was a good design and it was, it worked really well. I was actually surprised how well it worked. Uh, next we have, now this one, you only get a really good sensation of this uh, on Oscatoon or Akua, anywhere that has water. Um, because what you would do is when you turn the engines of this off over water, it will float where the water level is right here just because of the uh, the mass of it and the size of it. So the water level will be right up at the top so you can come out here. Actually, apparently there's no grab generator, which is fine. I, I don't think I won't put one in there because you're supposed to land it on the water and uh, it's got these landing gear just in case that you have to land in shallower water so that it's still more stable. Um, but the main entry is over here and you would put a, uh, a little exit landing thing here um, or an exit ramp to go down to the ground there whenever you get out. But in any case, so you've got this little area here and then you've got the crew area up here, which it's just got a few, uh, it's got the crew quarters and the bathroom and the captain's quarters. Um, it's only meant for like five people, um, five or six people, but it's an underwater exploration base. That's what it's meant for. I'm just gonna turn it off so it's light so I don't get all buggy. Um, also, one thing that I wanted to note is that this has a flight mode and a float mode. So you activate float mode and all the float uh, lights and stuff come on and flight mode, all the flight stuff come on. So it's really cool. Um, but in any case, uh, stop it, behave. Continuing on, uh, we've got the vehicle lift, which it's basically a platform made to lift up small vessels from the ground into space or ground onto a platform. It was an idea specifically for hover vessels not small vessels to lift hover vessels from the ground into space um which the real uh, benefit of that is going from like omicron to the moon and back and that's it um because you can't really land it you know bring it up into space to a space station or something because it, there's no docking on space stations uh, next, we've got the warp platform, which the warp platform is, well, as you can see, it's a platform made for warp. Um, I'm considering uh, spawning something similar to this in our current multiplayer on Masperon, or modifying the uh, currently existing platform we have, putting a warp drive underneath it and all, but uh, probably that's what I'll end up doing so that we take it out to the, uh, uh, we take it out to, uh, where the, uh, capital vessel that we want to steal is the, uh, freighter, um, and do that. Now, uh, next we have 
One of my favorite little tiny ships, it's the Minimalist Guppy. The Guppy is your uh, standard, super small, I say standard, it, my standardized, super small, everything you need crammed into one place, capital vessel. Um, again, it's got no uh, grav gen because you're supposed to just fly it from planet to planet and utilize its, uh, its unique flight smallness stuff um but uh it's basically meant as a starter vessel tier one even though it's tech it, it, size class one you know very small which if you notice the derelict was size class six um but uh from the guppy then we have my yellow jackets so the base yellow jacket, I'm just going to spawn them in one after the other. After, actually, no, I'm just going to spawn one at a time. Um, you guys may have seen the yellow jacket on, uh, well, several different series. This is the original yellow jacket made out of combat steel with, you know, all the stuff in it that you would need for a basic. This, this is my first yellow jacket upgraded with that in it um if you look down here you'll see it's my it's got the standard layout and standard everything that i did um i'm not going to give you a tour of the yellow jackets because it that take way too much time but i i uh, i pretty much showed off the yellow jackets in several different videos so you can go back and watch all those but you've got the yellow jacket prototype here, which is basically, it's just the, it's a steel frame with no devices inside with the basics for flight. You've got the standard yellow jacket, which is what I spawned in here. The yellow jacket B, which is with all the upgraded stuff on the entire inside. The uh, yellow jacket shell, which uh, is similar to the prototype except for with combat steel um and then you've got the yellow jacket dreadnought which has a lot more weapons and it's outfitted for war and the advanced dreadnought which is uh even bit has even more guns on it um so that's it for all of my capital vessels except for the mega station now i'm going to spawn the mega station in over here right near here as you can see its size dwarfs anything that i have currently built and it is going it is not even completely finished um it's about a quarter to a third maybe half the size of what it's going to be um this thing is it's basically a mobile space station um and it's going to be loose like its width is going to come out to here but this is going to have a ring let me let me do this so i can move quicker uh okay uh okay so up here we've got it's really hard to control with that control button. So what I'm going to have is there's going to be a ring coming around from here, around there, around to here, and around back. And then I'm going to have some docking pylons uh, that go up and out and down and out. So um, let me... And I am actually leveling it out right now. And you see how slow it's going because it's, uh, I, uh, well, it's massive for one thing, but it's RCSs are, uh, I'm actually just gonna activate my jetpack and deactivate God mode real quick. And okay. So the primary way that people would get into this is through one it either through one of the docking pylons that i don't have built yet or through the shuttle bays so you'd come in dock your shuttle here and then go up these ramps into the main 
section up here. Um, this over here is, like I said, it's modeled loosely off of Deep Space Nine. This would be modeled after the promenade where all these shops and everything are. Um, I don't even have this area finished. As you can see, it's a large open spaces. Um, I do have two areas on the sides finished. If I can find it over here, you've got your eye. Uh, this is the temple area where worshipers of random faith here come to worship. Uh, similar to the Bajoran Shrine, if you will. Um, but I just, I modeled it, the design of this out of, off of a uh, cathedral-esque uh, style worship area. And then back here is where the monks would get ready, or the monks or priests or whatever would get ready to, uh, for the prayer session. And then here's where the cloister is, where they would basically live. Um, You've got your bunk style areas. You've got your restroom over here. Um, and then you've got your living quarters over here where they would the recreation-ish area. And over here, you've got your Zing garden. And by Zing garden, I mean it's a garden. A large, you know, garden with a pool, a fountain area. You've got a garden, you know, an actual garden garden. Uh, you've got your little thing here you can relax underneath you've got uh, your requisite strange box behind a glass wall over here with strange purple hue-ish stuff um, but uh, basically it's a area to come to meditate and relax um, for the monks and everything and then of course you've got back to your temple here and then the other area that I have I uh, built up here is the medical station which has two large entrances in a small area it's the medical bay um, which has a whole bunch of medical ish devices and an operating room through here which of course it's a medical bay um, which I might replace the medical bay in there with something else because I've got these two medical bays here um, but for now that's what that is in here is where the food court area would be you'd have the food court over here and then you've got your bar over here reminiscent of quarks uh, there's no gambling stations because there's no gambling stations in Imperion, which they there should be they should put gambling stations or gaming stations as they would have to call them but you've got your area up here uh, where you can look out over the bar um, I'm considering putting tables and the like up here because those are off to the side, so you could put tables up there. And, um, and then over here, you've got the office area where Quark counts as money. Um, and uh, that's basically it for what's on the promenade. So from here, I'm actually gonna go all the way to the top and give you a tour from the bridge area down. So all the way at the top, way up here, we've got the command center, which, you know, is massive. Um, and overlooking the command center, you've got the captain's quarters, or camp, not quarters, captain's ready room uh, office thing, the commander's office. Um, and, uh, You've got up here, you've got your uh, uh, food replicator so you can order your Octogino in the morning. And uh, then you've got the, uh, these doors here lead to basically a side corridor, which uh, each side, like each of the three sides that don't have the captain's uh, office lead to here, lead to this area. Um, in here you've got these are the reaction control rooms each one has two uh tier two rcs's which is all that is going to be in here um but as i said each of the three areas there this way and that way lead to here 
and then coming down here, you can walk down. You can walk all the way down pretty much. Um, but here you've got the, uh, the turret control, which by the time the station is finished, each of these seats will be able to have one person in it controlling one turret simultaneously. Um, cause there's that many different turrets you can put on the ship. Um, ammo room. Then over here, you've got, well, you can access this area through the, uh, elevator system that I have. Uh, there are two elevators, one here and one over there. And they go from top all the way down to the bottom pretty much. But, uh... So you can use this and come down here into the engineering area, which is massive. Um, now this thing uses up a lot of fuel. So I'm expecting, to, let's see, how long till I run out of fuel? Seven hours? Well, okay, I'm not gonna be here that long, so I'm not even gonna bother deactivating things. But you've got your, uh, let's see, what is this? Uh, the red one over here is your grav generator. You've got your warp core there. And over here, you've got your uh, your offline protection. Um, now, for the most part, this ship, a lot of this ship is combat steel, but the exterior is all combat steel. Some of the interior, like on the promenade and the like, has uh, regular steel blocks just to save materials. Um, so if you were walking down to the promenade from here, you would come down this area through the door. The promenade is down here. Uh, this is the upper promenade. Some of the, uh, quarters areas, probably the crew quarters are up here. Uh, you would access them through this area. I don't have them outfitted yet. Um, and I don't have all of the ceiling Oh, I, I don't know why I don't have all the ceiling painted yet. I could have swore I painted the entire ceiling. Maybe I just did most of the ceiling. I need to go back and finish that. Anyway, so uh, this is the uh, recreation or the uh, the quarters areas. Um, and you've got your uh, the elevator that comes down this way here. Um, but I'm going to continue walking down. So we're gonna come back down here to the upper promenade, which I came in on the lower promenade down there. And up here is the upper promenade that looks out at the uh, expanse of space. Uh, you'll, you will be able to see the pylons uh, in between each of those coming out and going outward. So other capital vessels can dock alongside it um, relatively well. I don't know exactly how that will end up working. Um, but uh, here is where you can't go down anymore apart from elevators. Um, you can come down into one of the four large uh, landing areas, which isn't where we came in, but this is the lowest deck that you can access uh, and it's not finished either. Uh, but you see it's got the four different uh, areas, four different uh, landing bays, each with two massive landing door areas. Um, but in the center over here for small vessels, you can come and land here. Um, you can't, of course, bring capital vessels inside of a capital vessel. But uh, you can land your small vessels in here and uh, repair them up and then go back to a hangar bay. Um, and that's where the exterior, or the uh, ground base tour ends. Then we've got this room. Massive room, which I'm activating my jetpack. I don't know what I'm gonna put in this area. I'm thinking construction decks um, with a whole bunch of advanced constructors on multiple levels. Um, but if you guys have any ideas of what I could put in this vast open space here, let me know because, you know, suggestions are always, uh, always appreciated. 
but then coming down this elevator, we've got the oxygen storage area where all the O2 uh, things are stored. Um, and so once all these are full, I shouldn't have to worry about oxygen for a while, but I still don't know what I want to put in this area. Um, but I'm going to go out and uh, show you guys the exterior uh, from, I'm going to go all the way up to the cockpit. There is a single cockpit up there, um, which for the most part, the uh, RCSs and thrusters will be deactivated so that the ship doesn't rotate or anything. Um, let's see where it's over this way. Um, so that they, it doesn't rotate or anything while you uh, uh, are in space. But this is basically what it looks like. Um, and it, it's taken me a long time to make it as it is. But it's still a really awesome design in my own personal opinion. Um, and I want to uh, finish this and get it spawned in in a creative server or in a uh, survival server with Mahula and them. Um, also, you'll notice those red lines sticking out with the red pods. Each one of those is a grav generator because this thing is so huge that it needs multiples of them. And in fact, the... Uh, the gravity doesn't even extend to the outermost parts of the rings or of the outer ring. So it's going to be quite a while. I'm going to need more grav generators, probably four more. But uh, that's basically it for this station. Um, and that's going to be it for this episode, of course. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, hit the like button for me. And if you want to see more Imperion Galactic Survival, go ahead and subscribe. I'm Know-It-All DM. And as always, y'all have a good day now.